the distance here okay? Hey, I'm Stan Lee, and boy, are you lucky you're watching Deke Out USA Excelsior. <laughs> Antonio. So, uh, yeah, no, we're here at Gen Con uh, checking things out. Uh, it hasn't even started. It, everything starts tomorrow. There's a few things happening there, and people are playing games everywhere. So. This is how you know the three of us are super gamers. Like, we're here a day before the con, just so we can get the special day before the con gaming going. Oh, yeah, we, we don't mess around. There's plenty going on already yes, here, here in Indianapolis. Definitely. And you're not going to get to see Colleen this episode right now, because she's actually going to be running the cameras right now. Maybe we can get her in after she, uh, after we see all our names come by and stuff, and then you can probably see her. I don't because know, maybe. It's just, and, then, and then you're going to have to see one of us get up and then shut the uh, stuff off, or maybe we'll cut that out. I don't know. Uh, we, we were trying to do this live, but uh, the bandwidth just isn't here to get it done. When you're trying to push uh, HD, anyway. No, that's cool. We're excited. We're doing the, the on-location broadcast Yes. Now. But we'll upload it as soon as we can, and we'll definitely have it to you by eight central. So, little, little piece of San Antonio here in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I've been trying to get you on the on the show for a long time now, and uh, our schedule just always never seemed to quite connect. So, we have to come all the way to Indianapolis to to get that done. So. This is the mecca of the gamers. If, if we're going to meet somewhere, it might as well be it here, right? might as well right? be here. So it's not like you live just in Austin or anything. So. It's, the, it's the secret San Antonio-Austin feud. You can't really go to Austin to talk to him. He can't really come to San Antonio to talk to you. So you have to meet in neutral territory. We, we both have to give up the homeland, the home court advantage. Yes. Well, I'm yeah, glad to be here, though. It's, yeah, it's no, great, it's great a lot of fun. Guys. It's a lot of fun. And this will be my third time. Uh, this will be Colleen's second time. At Gen Con. At Gen Con. Mm -hmm. And then you? Uh, I've been coming to Gen Con every year since 2006. 2006 was my wow. very first one. Wow. I wish I had started coming back then. That would have been coming up, on a, coming up on a decade now. Wow. wow. <laughs> you know, you say it like that, it sounds like a long time. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you, you should know. say that one more time. A decade. That's a decade. You know, up on the screen. You know, you say that, you've got people who have been coming here ever since Gen Con was still in Wisconsin. So yes. they, they blow me out of the water. They've been coming for, you know, 20 years longer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a lot of people wonder, well, why, why is it called Gen Con? Why is it called Gen Con? Because it's in uh, Indianapolis. What's so great about, I mean, what's the idea behind Gen Con? Because it was in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin before, and that's where the name Gen Con comes from. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of history with this. Yeah. You know, and in addition to making the move from Wisconsin to uh, Indiana here, Gen Con also has gone through various other iterations. There was the Gen Con SoCal in California, plus Australia, France, Europe. Uh, they really made a really good name for themselves globally. And then through the year years, they've opened up a new one, closed down an old one, and uh, really keep that brand growing. So I really enjoy that. But we have you here, and... Uh, we know where you're from Inner Kingdom Games, but tell us a little bit about Inner Kingdom Games and, and what Inner Kingdom D Games does. Well, Inner Kingdom Games, it's an Austin-based uh, independent game company. Uh, the big primary objective with uh, Inner Kingdom Games was to uh, get a new home for Shadow Fist, the mm -hmm. Hong Kong action card game. Uh, from there, we picked it up from its previous publicist, Z-Man Games, uh, owned by Zess Leschinger. Great guy. He's been in the business for a while as well. Uh, from there, we founded the company, uh, started doing more work with Shadow Fist, and then uh, slowly we're working to build out and, and get a really good catalog of games aside from the flagship product. So Shadow Fist started out as a... Um 
collectible card game, right? Yeah, that's that correct. Uh, Shadow Fist is actually part of the first generation of CCGs. This Gen Con right here is the 20th anniversary for Shadow Fist. It debuted in 1995 that's in Gen Con. Wow. So uh, we're really we're really hoping to do it justice this year with another world championship here at Gen Con. We've got uh, two world championships, as a matter of fact. The first one's tomorrow at 4 p.m., and then the one after that is uh, Friday, also at 4 p.m. Cool. If you're watching this and you're here, because I know a lot of you are out here because, you know, us nerds like to stay, stick together as geeks like to stay together. But, uh, yeah, definitely go and check that out and, uh, and see what it's all about. But you have a Kickstarter. That's right. That's uh, right absolutely now. correct. Uh, we're really proud to be uh, promoting our ongoing Kickstarter here at Gen Con. It's been going on for about a week now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're looking pretty good on our numbers. We've got about three weeks left on it. And uh, we're here, we're talking about it, we're uh, distributing out our advertisements, uh, talking about it and all the different levels of support available during our tournaments. We've got prizes to promote it, we're talking about a lot of the uh, new cards coming up. Uh, the playtesting is pretty much done, the set is ready, so it's a really good opportunity here at Gen Con to see all the players that we normally don't see and show them what's coming. The spoiler list is out, we're showing off the new artwork coming. It's a really exciting time for us. So what kind of new cards are they going to get with this Kickstarter campaign? Well, as uh, Vince mentioned, Shadowfist started out as a CCG, a collectible card game way back in the day. Uh, and what Inner Kingdom Games has done is we've transitioned it to where instead of coming out in randomized booster packs of 10 cards or 12 cards, uh, instead they're coming out in fixed packs of 50 to 55 cards where every pack of the same title is the same uh, stack of cards. So with that new model at play, uh, one of the things we like to do here is really tell players how they can get the most bang for their buck uh, with uh, some of these new products. So here at uh, Gen Con, you know, you mentioned the, the new cards coming out. It's like uh, any new card game. We've got new characters, events, sites, uh, everything within the, uh, the game that the players love to really explore, the themes of the Hong Kong action movie universe, we're giving them more of the great classic tropes that they love. Very cool, very cool. Now, uh, you come here for a lot more than Shadow Fist. Absolutely, and, and I don't know a single gamer who comes to Gen Con for one game. There's <laughs> there's just too much going on. Even the even the Pathfinder crowd, they'll come here and they'll do the good, you know, 30 hours of Pathfinder, and then they'll go somewhere else and do another There's like spaces here that I didn't even know existed on the Gen Con side that I just found out today. Absolutely, it's, it's so amazing. I'm always finding something new every year, so... And, and, that, and that's just in the main convention hall. That's not counting the satellite sites. Mm -hmm. You know, you go over to Union Station, they've got the, uh, I think, what is it called? The, the Stink Party, the, there's the, the Pre-Con Party happening at Union Station mm -hmm. uh, right about now. Uh, you've got events happening at the hotels, at the different satellite rooms. You go up to conference rooms. For a long time, True Dungeon, which is always a big crowd pleaser, that one yes. used to be at the West End for years. I've been trying to go that, to that for years. Uh, I just I never have the time to make it. Every, like, and this year we have like uh, we have interviews set up during the times where we might have been able to go. And you gotta block your time out because once those once those tickets go live, they're snatched up. You've gotta be waiting by your computer to get those tickets in time because they don't last. One time I did it. It was an amazing experience. For those unfamiliar, True Dungeon is basically uh, live action GURPS. Where you're, but it's more than just a lark. Uh, you know, you're not just you know lightning bolt, lightning bolt. You're going through, you're solving puzzles, you're going through an actual dungeon crawl. You know, costumes, accoutrements. Uh, I hear it's like a little shuffleboard type of system stuff. Or some of, some of the, the challenges manifest in different ways yeah. depending on the class and the uh, the race that you pick. You know, if you're a cleric. You know, clerics cast uh, prayers and stuff, so the, the test for a cleric would be to memorize something and then to recite it. Uh, different manifestations of that for the, for the mage as well. With a fighter, your test might be more dexterous, where you have to maneuver yourself through a uh, physical challenge. So it's really exciting the way that they'll translate how a, game's how a game character would act to how somebody would have to uh, complete a task in the real world. Right. To, get, to get through that dungeon crawl. Right. So it really really does have a lot to offer out here. Very cool, very cool. I, 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 like I said, I need to do it. I'm going to do it next year, I hope, if I'm here. I'll, I'll be here. I don't know if Colleen will be here, but I'll be here. 
If you, she, if you haven't heard, she's going to be doing her master's. Uh, so she might be busy on the, in the summer. So. Yeah, um, so maybe some of our viewers want to start bidding for Vince for my spot to go with Vincent to Gen <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I don't know what Colleen is worried about. I started my master's program a month before Gen Con two years ago, maybe three years ago. And uh, I'm there, you know, I'm gaming until 6 in the morning, and then I crawl back to my hotel room grab my computer and go downstairs and drink a cup of coffee and knock out an essay and then go right back up and do it all over again. Teacher yeah, master's remember. degree, I have to be like on spot and doing stuff. Uh, so yeah, fine. I got to be in the classroom. I, I've got a lot of love and confidence in, in Colleen. I think she can get this done. <laughs> and you play a lot of werewolf here too. That's, that's another big draw for me uh, coming to Gen Con as well as uh, Origins and a number of other conventions. You know, I love Shadow Fist. I love a few other uh, card games. I really do love card games, but uh, werewolf is the big live action role playing game that I really enjoy uh, coming out here. Real strong community, real strong family of players. I mean, people who just come every year just to meet these people here in Indianapolis and play uh, Werewolf like all night. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, obviously there's a big crowd who are local to Indiana uh, and, you know, surrounding areas, uh, Illinois, Ohio. Uh, and then you've got people like me who I can only see these people by coming to Gen Con once a month and, and they're just some of the best gamers you'll ever know. And I, I love staying up until dawn, 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, playing werewolf with them. And then we go to breakfast and then we sleep until noon. Yes, and then uh, you wake up one morning and your arm doesn't move. We've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> That's, the struggle is real, Vince. The struggle is real. So aside from Shadow Fist, um, I know Inner Kingdom has done some other games. Do you have other games coming out in the future or are you going to stick more with Shadow Fist or we're, we're trying to really balance our time right now uh, you know with the big focus on the 20th anniversary for Shadow Fist that's the big product we want to get out the door uh, we're working on some other side projects right now we don't want to make any announcements until we're more ready to uh, to move forward on those projects but we're hoping to get some steady footing in the next 12 to 18 months and y'all are still doing Zombie Dash Yep, Zombie Dash is still around. We still have that available online, and uh, we take it with us with a few of our conventions. Because I had to, uh, you know, take a plane up here, I didn't have quite the storage capacity to bring everything with. Uh, so this weekend is really about Shadow Fist for Inner Kingdom Games and focusing on our big anniversary and the, the Kickstarter happening right now. Now, uh, tell me some of the, I mean, there's a lot of gaming that happens around here, but Gen Con is a lot more than just gaming. There's a lot of other stuff that happens. Oh, absolutely. It really does encompass the full spectrum of geek culture. You do have the games. You've also got cosplay. You've got panels, movie previews. Uh, Gen Con is, is an industry event. It's, it's, it is the industry standard. If you've got a hot new thing, this is the place to debut it. Uh, I remember uh, it was either last year or the year before that uh, where they premiered the movie adaptation of Dark Dungeons uh, here at Gen Con. So you've got movies that get premiered here. I know Dead Gentlemen like to do a lot of their uh, big previews and uh, and uh, releases at Gen Con. They're the, the team responsible for the gamers' movies, most recently Hands of Fate. Uh, great guys, absolutely great team, um, all of them. So it's just all around. And there's a lot of drinking, a lot of partying here as well. So. What, what happens at Gen Con stays at Gen Con. Uh, the gamers don't hold back. They're, they're a fun-loving bunch. They really are. Uh, but we keep it safe. We keep it uh, tight. We keep it close. And we take care of each other. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I do, I, I, in the three years I've been here, I've always, I've always seen everybody take care of each other. And I, I don't really see much of you know, issues out here. No, and I, I think as a culture, uh, geeks, nerds, gamers, we've really, I, I feel like we're growing as a culture in terms of being able to take care of each other. We're taking a lot of the threats that have been lingering the last couple decades and really stepped up our response. You know, um, a lot of gaming conventions have been really stepping up their game on anti-harassment policies, uh, really stepping up their game and ensuring that they're presenters, their attendees, their guests are safe, they feel safe. Uh, it's something that we really take seriously in the gaming community and we, we definitely see it on a personal level of people intervening more, saying no, that's absolutely not cool, helping each other out, making sure that this is safe for everyone. If you don't feel safe, then you're not having fun anymore and we're here to have fun. Yeah, now a lot of fun will be had. Absolutely. So, And it's probably going to start tonight, even before 
it starts. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so how long is your Kickstarter running for, Daniel? Uh, it's uh, it's a one month Kickstarter. We've been going since uh, July twentieth, and it ends August twentieth. So uh, we wanted to give it a little bit of time past Gen Con. Gen Con ends on the 3rd, so we wanted to get it past Gen Con and a little bit of time after that for people to get home, recoup, and maybe get one more paycheck to help recover from, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm no stranger to that either. That that one paycheck after Gen Con really helps bounce back. So uh, we really uh, wanted to help them out with it's that. kind of stuff. Being, it's staying here for four days, uh, or in our case, for, for five days, because we've been here since yesterday. Um, you know, it takes a hit to your bank account, especially when you're bringing two people to come. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's worth it, though. It oh, really absolutely. is worth it. Absolutely. I, I flew in just this morning. I'll be staying until Monday. And I, li I like to get that extra day rather than flying back Sunday just to kind of decompress, recover, instead of rushing right back into work Monday morning. Yeah, and next year we're probably going to plan and make sure that we get uh, part of the room on Tuesday. That's intense. Because that's intense. That's a good, that's a good schedule. Tuesday to Monday? That'd be cool. You, you, won't, you won't be lacking for stuff to do because there were people here even earlier than I was. 8 a.m., 9 a.m., they're already thrown down. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, they had a really great event today that I didn't know about um, called Trade Day. Mm -hmm. So especially sure. if teachers don't know about it, this is a really great event where they talk about gaming in the classroom. And Vince actually got to go to one of the I seminars. got to go to one of these, uh, what was it? Uh, it's called Gamifying the Curriculum or Gamifying the Classroom, yeah. And... Uh, I had some really interesting ideas. I'm sure you took a lot more out of it than I did, but I, I seem to t take a lot out of it and and taking it from a game designer aspect kind of makes it a little bit interesting. That was my take on it. Absolutely. How can I sell something to somebody that wants to teach somebody something? <laughs> something like that. Well, no, there are a lot of takeaways, and, and Gen Con is a great place to meet like-minded people who are trying to make that same effort you know, get games into schools, get students learning through means other than out of a, a textbook. And games have a lot to offer, and it's one of those things that sneaks up on you. You're you know, halfway through a dungeon manual, and you realize, oh my gosh, there's actually some really good vocabulary in these books, some really good elevated uh, language, understanding, getting into the math. There's a lot that goes into it that has a lot to offer young students who maybe don't feel quite as engaged as they could be. Yeah, and that's great to move away from the whole, like, 1980s, like, fear of gaming. Um, it's nice to see us moving more towards, like, gaming is acceptable. It teaches you all these skills. You know, you learn how to socialize. You learn critical thinking skills. So it's great that we're all, you know, really telling people, hey, that's really what we're doing over here. We're not absolutely. just a bunch of weird yeah, no, people hanging right, out. Yeah, no, you're and it's, it's a very inclusive community, and I think that's what is drawing more and more people to it is the inclusiveness. Definitely. So, um, what else is going on uh, here? You're, you're going to be running your uh, tournaments here? Sure, sure. We've got two big events uh, for Shadow Fist. Um, outside of that, uh, I'll be doing a few other of the, the games that I enjoy. I'll be probably doing uh, Settlers of Catan. Of course. That's a big one for me. Are you going to the big Settlers of Catan charity event? Um, uh, I or would, did you I, miss out on that one? No, I had to miss out on that one. That's a that's a conflict in my schedule. I'm doing their their Masters tournament uh, first thing tomorrow morning. So that'll that's the all day event. You're going to win this time, though, right? You know, I've been trying. I think this will be my fourth try, maybe, at the Settlers tournament. and. You just don't know how many times we've talked about you on the show and how you've scarred me for Settlers. Like, you know, we, we you do blame you. I never even played it, but I finally played it. <laughs> I finally played Settlers. And uh, I liked it. See, and it, and it kills me because I'm basically, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the Settlers of Catan equivalent of a minor league baseball player who, you know, feels really good in the minor leagues. And you go up to the to the major <laughs> leagues and totally get hosed. You know, I'll win a lot at home, you know, in San Antonio and Austin. I come up to Gen Con and all of a sudden these guys are just, you know, men and women alike. I'm, I'm getting hosed left and right. I can't keep up. Well, well do you, you find... Last year you got, like, taken out in, like, one... 
one session, didn't you, or something? something like oh no, that. last year was better. Last year I actually did make it to the semifinals, but it's it's hot and cold with me. There was one game where I I won the game in a walk. It was it was a ten minute win for me. I, I steamrolled, and the game after that I got steamrolled. I never even had a chance. <laughs> and it's I I'm I'm up here. I'm down here. I'm back up here, and then I'm out. So do you find that happening with Shadow Fist? Like Vince is always fussing at me because we develop games too, and he's like, you can't beat people when you're trying to demo the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you just can't do that. <laughs> it's not fun for people. So do you find yourself, like, trying to pull back when you play Shadow Fist, or...? Well, when it comes to demos, you know, uh, obviously when it comes to, to teaching somebody the game, the, the adage is, let the Wookiee win. The, with Shadow Fist, I really try to let the, the players take control. I may not even play. I'll sit the players down and kind of walk them through it rather than play them directly. And that way they get a better experience of having somebody help walk them through the process rather than just saying, all right, you know, at, across the table versus over the shoulder. Kind of right. Thing. Very cool. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Did you have anything added to that? Like, what kind of stuff are you... you we, oh, for the tournament. Like, so what kind of stuff are you? Like? We we've got some we've got a great stuff uh, happening at the tournaments. We've got some prizes. So, uh, we're really trying to step up our prize support for the 20th anniversary tournament. You know, this is the World Championship, and it's it's two different tournaments. So, not unlike uh, other card games on the market, Shadow Fist has two variants. One is uh, basically a I'm not sure what the right term is uh, open open format where every card ever printed is playable. So that's the one happening on Friday, and then the one tomorrow is a limited format where only the most recent sets are played. So those are the two events that we have going on. We've got uncut sheets as prizes, plaques, uh, sealed product available. Uh, we're really trying to, to show our appreciation for the players who are with us, who have been with us throughout the years, and, and really help keep Shadow Fist alive. It really, it really does, and every time uh, you have uh, something for Shadow Fist, it always does really well on Kickstarter. Yeah, this is our fourth project, as a matter of fact. Uh, the first three, they've all succeeded. We've had a lot of success, uh, both keeping the fan base active and having the support of Kickstarter. Uh, and it's so funny, because you know, you do a Kickstarter, you set up the project, and um, Kickstarter says, okay, well, we're, our team is gonna review this, and we'll get back to you in a couple of days and see if it's good enough to be approved. And for the first three, they did that, and in a couple of days, they said, okay, yes, you're good to go. And then on this one, it's almost like, okay. Yeah, they don't we, even do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, at this point, I hit live, I hit, you know, submit, and they're like, nope, you're live, you're done, you're good. It's like, oh, oh, oh okay, I guess that's, that's happening now. They, I'm, I'm, they trust me now, I'm part of their team. Right. So I, I, really, I, I really appreciate that confidence that, that the Kickstarter people have that Shadow Fist is gonna succeed. Very cool. Do we leave there? I don't know, are, am I lost there? No, I can't. I couldn't hear either one of you, so now I'm concerned. We're, so we're both out, huh? Yeah. Shouldn't so. be, but she has a problem with hearing, so. So yeah, you, I don't know. She, you, I don't know. You, you, I never hear very well, so we're we're gonna check this in a few minutes and make sure it all went well. And you might have to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have to have a thing with the yeah, guy. Yeah, uh huh. I'm a just, guy I'm just and see a horse about a man. Uh -huh. <laughs> But uh, no, 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 no. But uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having and, uh, me. Man. It's great yeah, to finally be on the show. It was great. So, but yeah, we're here at Gen Con again, and uh, we're doing the show. We're gonna post it a little bit later. But uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Vince. I'm Colleen. I'm, I'm Daniel. Oh, yeah. Geek out, I say. <laughs> <laughs>